right there. I'd like to call the uh, Board of Governors meeting back to order, and we are going to uh, rearrange the agenda items a little bit uh, because we have so much to celebrate today. So we want to start with celebrations and recognition of excellence in our system. So we will turn to item 3.6, uh, the 2016 Hayward Awards for Excellence in Education. Chancellor. Thank you, uh, President Baum, members of the board. I'm going to ask uh, uh, Vice Chancellor Walker and uh, Student Senate or faculty senate. Oh, there he is. <laughs> I wouldn't, didn't see you. Fact, David Morse to come forward and uh, do these uh, awards. Pam? Thank you. I was looking for him as well. Um, <laughs> don't, one more person, leave me alone up here. It's scary. <laughs> uh, President Baum, uh, Vice President Estolano, board members, and uh, Chancellor Harris. The 2016 Hayward Awards for Excellence in Education uh, our, our recipients are in the audience today representing the best of California Community College leaders. The very best of their leadership is sitting to my right, and I'm uh, delighted to introduce uh, David Morris, President of the Academic Senate. And for any of us who have taught, um, this is a significant uh, honor for these particular individuals to rise to this level of appreciation by their colleagues and on their campuses as well. David? Yes. Okay, thank you, Vice Chancellor Walker. So yes, the uh, Hayward Awards were instituted in 1989 to celebrate faculty excellence. They are sponsored through a grant from the uh, Community College Foundation. So we want to thank the foundation for their sponsorship and their assistance. And so I will uh, bring up each of the recipients individually. We have four recipients this year, and would like to introduce each of them individually. The first uh, being Melinda Kashuba from Shasta College. So Melinda, will you come forward, please? <laughs> Melinda is a professor of geography at Shasta College. She empowers students of diverse backgrounds and experiences to achieve both success both inside and outside the classroom with tangible applications of her subject area. Linda, uh, I'm sorry, Melinda uh, demonstrates how geography is relevant in everyday life and in understanding world events. So congratulations, Melinda. Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations. Okay. I love geographers. I'm an urban planner. Oh, yes, so, very yes. good. Paige is going to want us to drift that way just a little bit. Yeah, so. Oh, we drift this way. To the other left. Yes, thank you. Come on over. Our second honoree, I'm not certain, has made it. Linda McAllister from Berkeley City College. Linda, are you here? And I thought not. Unfortunately, Linda um, is coming in from Berkeley, and we're not certain. Um, you know, she, she has not joined us as yet. Uh, but I do want to, do we certainly do want to honor Linda. She is a sociology professor who is committed to assisting students from diverse backgrounds to meet their goals, find their voice, and transform their own lives through education. Under her leadership, the social science department has been the largest non-English, non-mathematics department involved in college planning and student offerings to meet the challenges of access for our traditionally underserved, underperforming student populations. So we do congratulate Linda, and we will certainly get the award to her. If she arrives during the meeting, bring her, yeah. please bring her forward. Okay, yeah. we'll do. And there's a nature accident on 80. Ah, um, so there's an accident apparently in between Berkeley <laughs> and here. That could be the reason. So. Okay. Uh, Kathy Malloy from Santa Barbara City College. Kathy, will you come forward? In the words of one of her colleagues, Kathy Malloy, a professor of English and Developmental Reading and Writing, represents the true spirit and mission of the California Community College system. 
She works daily to assist students, most of, whom, most of whom would otherwise not be able to receive a college education. Her tireless efforts are driven by a belief in fairness, which is determined by, uh, by need. Hers is inspired work, and she inspires those she works with, staff, students, faculty, and administrators. And I have to say, uh, specifically, and Kathy has also long been very active with the State Academic Senate and has helped us uh, with work with the Chancellor's Office and other situations. So congratulations, Kathy. <laughs> Yeah, that's always Thank you. Flat of And the fourth winner, uh, Anjanette Oberg from Miracosta College. Anjanette, please come forward. <laughs> Anjanette is an associate psychology faculty member whose work is well beyond any expectation. Uh, her, work is, her work as a psychology professor is quite literally unprecedented, as her local academic senate president shared. Because she's a product of California Community Colleges, open access resonates passionately with her. And she is, uh, she has incidentally, want to make mention, has brought her mother with her uh, today for the Fantastic. presentation. Oh, that's great. So, thank you for joining us as well. And so, congratulations. Mom, go out here. Get your mom up here so we can get her in the picture. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm shaking her head. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Mine, Mom. Here. She had that. That is a good This morning, Angelique and her mother. They uh, both attended Riverside City College and got their degrees together wow. there. Oh. So. Oh. If I could clarify, my mom attended San Bernardino Valley College. I attended RCC. In 2007, when I received my master's degree, my mom graduated in the same ceremony with two bachelor's degrees. Wow. Wow. I'm so glad you're here to share this with me. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, there we are. That was wonderful. It's just wonderful. Yeah, just a little bit more. She's going to hold that against me for the rest of the week. Take a step forward. Just take one step forward. That's good. Can I take advantage of your height? You bet. <laughs> I always go to the back of the car. <laughs> Do you want me to be in the back? No, oh, you're great. I'm going to stand right here. <laughs> All eyes on me. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> 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 when the professionals have done all this. There's Linda. All right. Here we go. We, we're gonna we actually just had our final winner come in, so we might want to do the, the okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You're right on time. I really apologize. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for yes. Oh, yes. Awesome. I'm so sorry. No, no, no. That's okay. We're glad you're here. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. I told him the way you would <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Now let's get an individual. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.
You were saluted in your absence, but we took another Well, that's very kind. Thank you. Or should I stay? Sure. Thank you. Okay. Member Khan is from Berkeley City, right? Yes. So. As is Member Belinsky. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. Thank yes. you. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, thank you for coming. Well, you know okay. what? Thank you again to the Board of Governors and to the Foundation. Keitha, <laughs> are you going to do the next one? Yes. We're now going to move on to our recognition of somebody who's near and dear to this system. Uh, it is a recognition of Mario Camara, the founding member of the Board of Directors for the Foundation for California Community Colleges and a former member of this Board of Governors and former president of this Board of Governors. <laughs> Chancellor. Yeah. Come right up here. Thank you, President Baum, uh, members of the board. Um, I'm really pleased to be here with you today to recognize. Not as pleased as I am. Uh, <laughs> he's getting off the hook, isn't he? Um, really, we've got 30 years of aggregate service in supporting the California Community Colleges. Uh, as you heard uh, President Baum mention, Mario's been uh, a former uh, Board of Governor member for a number of years and has served 18 years on the Foundation for California Community College's Board of, Go board of Directors, uh, was our founding, our founding board member. Uh, we found a, a press release as we were, we all just moved, right? And so we were cleaning out boxes and finding all kinds of, of neat history. So we found a press release from 1998 when Mario Camara was our founding uh, Board of uh, Director uh, member. And we were so proud of ourselves. We raised $120,000 to support the California Community Colleges. Um, 18 years later, we're, uh, we're, we're growing up. We're moving out of that honorary teenage years. We're now a $30 million organization. 85 cents of every dollar that comes into our organization goes out to support our students, our colleges, our college foundations, our system as a whole. We have reserves. We have the nest egg for the future, although Mario's going to say we need more. Um, I, always. <laughs> oh, you always need more. Uh, Mario, you've been a tremendous leader for the foundation. Um, you are leaving us in uh, a really great uh, position. Um, thank you for all you've done for me personally and professionally and for everything that you've done for the foundation and uh, for the California Community Colleges. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, um, it's been a privilege. Um, I started this journey with uh, community colleges in 76, when then Governor Brown uh, called and said, hey, i got something for you to do. <laughs> Little did I know that he'd be back <laughs> and I'd be saying goodbye when he was still governor. But it, it's been a privilege. It was a privilege being on this board. It was a privilege to lead the board. It's been a privilege to found the foundation. And it's been a privilege to work with such great people. Some things have changed, however. Uh, when I started here, we usually met in crappy motels <laughs> <laughs> all over the state, because that was what we did in those days. And we had fold-up tables and fold-up chairs. And that's about it. <laughs> and we didn't have any money for coffee or donuts or anything. It was really basic. The things that haven't changed, though, are the people. The people are terrific in this system. They really make the difference. And uh, today, you know, we're getting a little better at what we do, I think. Uh, the system as a whole is doing a better job. The thing that's making it harder, I think, is the cost of education generally. It's becoming ridiculous at all levels. It's the biggest barrier to entry I know of. So we've got to kind of work on that a little, I think. This system, however, is still the biggest bargain educational bargain in the country you know for what we provide to the number of students at a cost that is truly remarkable so we got to keep that alive and well and uh, if you ever need anything let me know <laughs> Wow we have a beautiful uh, sculpture to present to you Ooh. Right in the kind of yeah, <laughs> 
quite a pillar. You'll see. <laughs> it's a pillar. It's a pillar. You can see that it, it's, it's, a it's a pillar that, that, that holds up the roof above our heads. And, uh, <laughs> And Mario's been. I better leave it here then. <laughs> this way? There we go. I hope that's a wide angle lens. <laughs> and we're, we're always proud to have a fellow Angelino uh, uh, up here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. It's always important to uh, recognize both the excellence within our classrooms, but also those individuals who've devoted their lives, their, uh, their public service to our students. And, um, and I'm sure Mario received a, uh, a big paycheck in return uh, <laughs> for the years. Uh, for <laughs> and obviously, people don't do it for, uh, you know, political power or even financial gain, they do it out of a sense of mission and service. And so uh, we all kind of stand in, uh, in your shoes and follow your legacy and appreciate uh, the leadership you've, you've given to the system over the years. And thank you. Uh, we're now uh, moving <coughs> on in the agenda. We'll move on to item 3.4, the uh, demonstra uh, an update. Uh, we had an update a few meetings ago on professional learning uh, and professional development. So, Chancellor. Thank you, uh, President Bond, members of the board. Uh, it is really a pleasure to ask Paul uh, Steenhausen uh, to uh, come forward and present a, uh, a brief demonstration on our PLN. Uh, Paul's worked very, very hard on this over the past uh, many uh, months uh, as the head of our Student Success uh, Center. Uh, he's got a colleague with him today he will introduce, and uh, Paul, I think I think uh, you're just about ready. I'll pitch it to you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Baum, Chancellor Harris, board members. I am Paul Steenhausen, Executive Director of the Success Center for California Community Colleges. And the Success Center is a joint initiative of the Foundation for California Community Colleges and the Chancellor's Office. It's really focused on professional development. And the Success Center is funded with seed monies from the Kresge Foundation, which is a nonprofit based in Michigan. With me is Rico Bianchi, who is the, uh, who's with Telecommunications and Technology Infrastructure Program South, or TTIP South, which is out of Palomar College. And Mr. Bianchi's predecessor, Blaine Morrow, and I presented to the board last May with an early, very early version of what was then called the Online Clearinghouse, uh, a one-stop shop of effective practices and trainings for faculty, staff, administrators, and trustees. And at that time, the board uh, asked us to return when we uh, were further along with the project and were getting ready for rollout. So we're really glad to be back here to demonstrate the professional learning network, as we're calling it. The, uh, background on the concept of the professional learning network can be found in your agenda book on pages 139 to 141. And you have some printed slides as well. In the interest of time, uh, Mr. Bianchi is going to move to uh, provide an update on the project timeline. And uh, then both of us will launch into a, a brief demo of the site. Thanks, Paul. Um, basically, as uh, probably if you remember from last, the, the last time uh, Paul and Blaine presented, the, um, there was a, a working group uh, and we worked with a number of, um, of different uh, program partners like the Academic Senate basically uh, to put together uh, functions and content that were desired for a professional, what we're calling now professional learning network which basically involves uh, a lot of uh, professional development resources throughout the whole system. It's a, a basically a portal and a, a resource uh, uh, portal for all the, all the professional development uh, materials that would be submitted through 
various colleges, uh, organizations in the system. So basically in March of 2015, we hired a, a web development firm to start uh, building the site. And it's actually, uh, right now, we're, we're really close to doing a, a 1.0, what we call 1.0 uh, rollout. Uh, it was completed pretty much in December uh, this past year, and we're doing a soft launch right now. So we're inviting different groups, organizations, and people to just look at the site, uh, demo it, and give us some feedback. Um, in February of this year, we also started with some accessibility testing. So that was, uh, it should be completed probably the next couple of weeks. And then we, we would like to do a soft, uh, a real launch uh, with all the bells and whistles of market, uh, marketing and outreach and all that, probably the third week of April of this year. And, and that'll be the official launch. And then we also hired a project manager uh, right now that uh, is managing uh, not only the uh, professional learning network, but other uh, events as well. We do some event coverage uh, as, as part of part of this as well. Um, and now we're going to go to a tour of the site. Right yeah, now. let's go ahead and start the tour of the professional learning network uh, 1.0. This site is uh, part of the Chancellor's Office domain, you know, just like the scorecard, which you talked about yesterday. So you can find it at prolearningnetwork.cccco.edu, and that, that address is in your, in your handout. Uh, you can also uh, just type pln.cccco.edu or some variations, and you will get to the same place, okay? So I'll go ahead. So you can see the home page here, uh, Community Colleges Professional Learning Network, your one-stop site to effective practices, trainings, and other resources. And it starts with a question, what would you like to do today? Would you like to access uh, resources, learn about effective practices? Uh, would you like to access video trainings, connect with your peers, work on a personalized prof uh, professional development plan, access uh, speakers or other experts? Uh, or access a calendar. And you can see here we have some videos uh, already set up. These are customized videos that we were able to uh, produce with a, a firm, a partner firm. Uh, on data, this one's on data, Community College Chancellor's Office data tools. And each video is just about two minutes long. So you can get it in bite-sized pieces and, and digest it quickly. Uh, and, and we actually launch board, which you heard about yesterday, has produced videos. We're going to be able to put the launch board videos here. This is really an effort to take all of the great work that the system produces, all of the professional <coughs> development resources, which are currently scattered on many different sites, and put it in one place and make it easy and accessible for all of us to share with each other, to collaborate, communicate with each other, and continually learn as a system. Here at the bottom of the page, you have popular posts, you know, most viewed posts, and, <coughs> and recently added posts as well. You can see there's, there's room to grow here. There's, you know, there's some real estate. Something we'd like to do is put some, uh, uh, something for the chancellor's office here on the home page. This is a good, a great opportunity for the chancellor's office divisions to communicate out to the field on what's new, what's emerging, answering questions, say, about equity. There's big issues about how do you integrate equity plans with student success plans, with basic skills plans. You can have the materials all here, and maybe some videos, short videos, and other resources, models, you know, templates that they can access. Up here at the top, you can see uh, here in the menu bar, you see the home, the, and, then, and then the various components uh, which align to these action buttons. You also have the share button, which I will uh, explain in a bit, and also initiatives. This is a place where we can uh, place uh, other professional development uh, materials, like from education planning initiative. Rather than having, again, a separate site, you can put it all here. And so we're working <coughs> closely with all of those partners on uh, consolidating the materials here on this one site. So you can also search by keyword, which is right here, if you know what you want to look for. Actually, I was looking be before this meeting. I typed in Express for Success. Kathy Malloy from Santa Barbara City College just got an award in large part for her work with Express for Success, and that's here as well. 
Uh, so you can, you can search by basic skills or express for success or something like that. So the site is accessible to anybody, but there are certain features, certain components that are only available to employees or other members of the community college system. And so what we're recommending is that if you're with the system, if you're on a board, if you're a faculty, staff, administrator, uh, <coughs> or a, a local board, to go ahead and, and log in to get an account. And I'll go ahead and do that now. This is, it says here, is this first time visiting the site? If so, you can register there. I already am in the, the system, so I'll go ahead and log in. Okay, so I'm logged in, and I'll go ahead and turn it over now to Rico, who's going to talk to you about the calendar, the Speakers Bureau, and the discussion board. And if we can keep that concise, we don't need to go through each step of each uh, section, though, too, sure. I want to make sure. Sure. What I'll do is I'll just go generally through this, um, basically <coughs> in terms of um, the, what Paul mentioned here. Uh, the discussion boards are basically for uh, the connect button basically uh, connects you to forums and forums basically just uh, you probably all familiar with forums a way for uh, for colleagues to connect with each other on topics right now we have topics such as accreditation uh, student success uh, teaching and learning that kind of thing and you know you can actually post something on there let's say someone's having some issues with accreditation or something and they want their uh, feedback from uh, others in the field uh, their colleagues and that they would be able to get that that feedback and this is one of the features that you have to be logged in to, to access so that was one of the requirements people we asked people if they wanted it to be public or private and they all said we'd like this to be private um, and then the calendar actually is a pretty neat feature it has uh, all the events that are uh, pretty much that we've recognized to be in the system from different organizations or having uh, conferences and stuff like that so I'm going to show you a real quick example of that. Let's say I'm interested in math conferences. So I put math in there, and then it comes up with, you know, this month there's a, a conference April 22nd to April 23rd dealing with math. So that's a pretty neat little feature. There, we also have a speaker's directory, and I'm going to keep using we can figure out the speaker's yeah, directory. Speaker's directory, but yeah. So if so I put math in there, basically what, what what there would be would be uh, a number of speakers that have something to do with math mm -hmm. background. So why don't we okay. go be, uh, instead of going through an entire tour of the site, uh, sure. go on to the next slide on the other project uh, information because it, it it looks very rich and it looks very well developed. So then uh, and then we can get to some uh, board member questions. Sure. Okay. So yeah, you can all uh, log in, access, go to the Learn site, and access uh, training videos on how to, use how to use digital tools more effectively. The uh, material on the Professional Learning Network that's submitted by faculty, staff, and others throughout the system is subject to Creative Commons licensing so that uh, the authors make it available to users as long as the users provide attribution, credit to the author, and use it for non-commercial purposes. Uh, it's also uh, going to be used as a tool for the Institutional Effectiveness Partnership Initiative, which is uh, the uh, Chancellor's Office-led uh, program to provide assistance to colleges struggling with accreditation, student success, and other issues. And so we have a lot of uh, support there on uh, vetting material that comes in. The current year budget has money for the ongoing operation of the Professional Learning Network that will fund that content development uh, as well as uh, curation. You've got to make sure this is highly searchable and current it doesn't get, so it doesn't get stale. Uh, the, the upkeep of the site and then <coughs> outreach and training, which is going to be critical to publicize the site. Uh, market it, and then provide training to the field on how to optimize its use. Thank you. I'd like to uh, open it up to board member questions. Uh, Vice President Estolano. It's not a question so much as a couple comments. One, it looks great, and I think it's uh, very valuable. 
Um, just one piece of advice. You mentioned on that home page there's lots of real estate. I would encourage you not to fill that real estate. I think oftentimes government um, websites, government sponsored websites, try to put lots of stuff on that home page. It makes it cluttered and it's less attractive for people to use. Um, the cleaner you can keep it, the better. That's just my advice. We spend a lot of time helping folks design websites and uh, it just keep it clean, Paul. It's all there, right? Yeah. People can That'll find their advice. way. Um, so don't don't fall into the trap of most government agencies of trying to you jam dump. It. Exactly. <laughs> right. So nice job. Thank you, Member Hawkins. Uh, thank you. Uh, exciting. <coughs> uh, just curious. See, in uh, getting uh, access to the site, any thought about lo linking that into OEI or Canvas so we don't have to have multiple sign-ons throughout the system? Yeah, we're we're going to be uh, we're working on single sign-on for for this site, so we're working with a uh, uh, tech center to develop that and incorporate uh, their, sh their, their shibboleth integration with this. That'll help get it out there as far as making it easy access. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Member Belinsky. Just a question in terms of when this is up and fully running, will there be any kind of webinars for the people in the yes. field so that they can learn from the webinars how to effectively use this? Yes, absolutely. We will have webinars working with a uh, number of, of partners and getting the, the word out to the field. We're doing a number of presentations already, but webinars, uh, you know, videos on how to use it. We're going to produce some videos on that as well, as well as train the trainers, you know, to get out to the campuses, working closely with the professional development coordinators, you know, which are the, 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 the really the boots on the ground at the campuses. So yes. Yeah, we'll also be streaming events uh, for events that we're capturing. Uh, if, we're, if we're invited to go to a conference to 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 uh, record it, we'll be we'll streaming <coughs> it, and if it's related to professional development, we'll stream it on this site. Member Avalos. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you very much for the presentation. I think um, <coughs> I, I think this is super valuable, right? I, I think what we're all doing, in, in terms of where you've been to where you are now, last year is incredible, right? Um, ultimately, to me, it's <coughs> engagement. Right, because uh, a, a site is only as good as a site. <coughs> but if you engage people, how do you track engagement? Is probably the first question. Second, how do you get people there? And then third, um, how do you measure success? Right, because ultimately, it looks great, but if it's not being used and if it's not making an impact, then how do you value it? Right. So those are three questions I'd love for you to talk about. Sure. As far as tracking engagement, uh, we will have. Uh, Use extensively analytics, you know, to see how how, how often is this viewed, uh, who, who's viewing it. Um, our uh, something I didn't get a chance to show you, but under resources, uh, there's an opportunity to email the resources to colleagues to uh, put it on Facebook or mm -hmm. share via LinkedIn or Twitter and, and other ways. Uh, so we're going to have pretty robust analytics to track use and identify what what to do better. Um, uh, you had a question about um, measuring success. Uh, you know, I think it's important to, 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 to mention, and this is something you, this board talked about last May. By itself, this is not going to be enough, obviously. You don't create a website and then say, here's a website with all these trainings and, and resources, and, and here you go. Uh, this has to be tightly integrated with all the other professional development activities that go on throughout the system through institutional effectiveness and all the workshops as well as all the conferences, all the other convenings and really make sure that it's something that colleges are embracing and using as a tool you know, at their, on their own campus. So I think we're going to look at, we're going to look at usability of the professional learning network conduct surveys. We have an evaluator on board evaluating the, the institutional effectiveness initiative and the professional learning network. But ultimately, I think we're going to, we need to think of this as, as a tool, one, one of several, uh, that's going to, to drive collaboration and changes in programs that, that improve student outcomes. I think that's ultimately what, what the purpose is. Yeah. Sorry. And then the last question for me was, how do I get access? How, how do I get access in terms of you know, getting a code to get into <coughs> the knowledge exchange? Because that's what I'm also interested in seeing as well. Sure, yeah, and I hope that's something you all you know, do today over you know, sometime this week. You go to the, the website, which if is here. Yeah, if, we, if, we could, if we could have uh, the link to the website sent to all the board members, that would be terrific. We'll Great. send it to you this week. The one thing that I learned in speaking to all the student affairs professionals over 
the years is that s students don't do optional. You have to almost make something manual and or uh, mandatory in order for students to do it. And, and so it's important, and we've mentioned as a board the uh, a premium we place on professional development. We, we want to con continually invest in our faculty and in our staff so they can better serve our students. And so I'm hoping we're figuring out a way that it's not seen as an optional exercise. I, I trust that the site's been developed and the resources are first rate, that, but that it's something that, uh, I don't want to make it sound compulsory, but it is uh, something that people are, are, are going to do, as, as <coughs> uh, Member Avalos said. Member Haynes had a question? Uh, wonderful. Um having something centralized like this. Um, my question goes, you mentioned vetting, and so what are some of the, can you be more specific about what are some of the elements um, as you look at what's gonna go on the site and what may not go on the site? Sure, we've uh, developed a rubric. This is with uh, the Institutional Effectiveness Partnership Initiative Advisory Committee and the Professional Devel Development Work Group. We've developed a rubric that evaluators will follow uh, it, when they when they're uh, when they're uh, evaluating and reviewing material, it asks for clarity uh, of of the material, uh, uh, clarity of the of the of the supporting documentation, uh, data. You know, if they're if the if the authors are claiming that it's an effective program, that they have data to support it. So we are partnering with the research and planning group, the RP group, which is the, made up of institutional researchers, to look at the data. Uh, and so we have uh, a number of reviewers, you know, already volunteered, you know, in this pool that are going to be using this rubric to uh, to decide on on the materials that make it inside the professional learning network. Well, thank you very much for the uh, update, and uh, we look forward to hearing about its use in the uh, coming uh, months and years. Thank you. Too. Thank you. We're moving on to item 3.1. It's an update on the um, I Can Afford College Financial Aid Awareness Campaign and preview of our new campaign. So, Chancellor. Thank you, uh, President Baum, members of the board. Uh, this is a, a project that uh, you've expressed interest in on a number of occasions, and what we'd like to do today is give you a bit of an update on the program and also uh, attempt to answer some of your questions about how we're doing outreach for some of our other uh, related activities. As all of you know, uh, one of the challenges we face is that we often uh, get funding from the state to do some of this uh, wonderful work, and then they don't fund the communication that goes with it. And so what we've tried to do, what uh, Paul and his team have tried to do is really incorporate some of the uh, uh, other <coughs> messages into the I Can Afford College campaign, which is the one campaign that has been consistently, although uh, flat, uh, funded from the, from the state. And so uh, with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Vice Chancellor Feast, and we'll get our uh, technology fired up here, and then we'll be ready to talk. Paul? Thank you, Chancellor Harris. Uh, President Baum and board members, good morning. Uh, we'd like to update you on the status of the I Can Afford College uh, campaign, as well as show you a new video that just finished production. I'm joined by uh, Paige marlott Door, our communications director. We're very fortunate to have uh, Paige with us. Uh, she is a independent contractor, actually, was instrumental in standing up the campaign uh, more than 10 years ago, and she's obviously now on staff and doing great work for us. Uh, just by way of background, the I Can Afford College campaign is a um, statewide initiative funded by Prop uh, 98 dollars. It started in 2003-2004 at a time when, at a time when uh, enrollment fees for community colleges, college students uh, increased uh, quite significantly. Uh, there was concern about the impact of that on low-income students, and so the legislature and the administration decided to uh, set aside some funds for an ongoing awareness campaign to make students aware, and prospective students aware of financial aid opportunities. The annual campaign has a budget of uh, $2.8 million. Uh, unfortunately, that hasn't changed since 2003, 2004, uh, and we'll talk about some of the challenges that that presents a little bit later. Um, the, the campaign is directed and managed by the California Community College's Chancellor's <coughs> Office. Uh, we do contract with outside agencies for help in producing creative materials, um, buying media, and doing much of the on-the-ground on outreach that happens in uh, uh, community colleges, high schools, and community events around the state. The messages that are promoted by the, uh, are actually dictated in, in, the, in statute. 
Um, the messages are that uh, uh, California community colleges remain affordable. Uh, financial aid is available to cover enrollment uh, fees, co other costs as, such as books and even living expenses. That financial aid professionals are available um, uh, on campuses and can provide one-on-one -on -one assistance. The campaign's uh, key tar target audiences are high school juniors and seniors, recent high school graduates, uh, those currently enrolled in community colleges, as well as reentry students and influencers such as parents and aunts and uncles and coaches and folks who have contact with uh, students and prospective students. All the activities in the campaign are meant to drive folks to um, a counselor's office or to the ICanAffordCollege.com website, which was la launched in 2004. Uh, the site is bilingual. It's a mirror sp English Spanish site. It con uh, contains uh, information about what types of aid are available, how to apply. It has a responsive design, meaning that it is um, uh, you can be viewed on a tablet or a smartphone. Uh, re our, some of our research shows that uh, <coughs> 60 to uh, even 70 percent of, of our target audience uh, accesses the internet net primarily. Uh, on mobile devices. It contains links to applications, uh, contact information for financial aid offices, net price calculators, as well as videos of success stories, students who have accessed financial aid and gone on to have success. The website was uh, redesigned after uh, a, a lot of usability testing back in uh, March of 2014. Um, it's <coughs> proven very successful. We've had more than uh, one million unique visitors in the last two years. That's double uh, the, the traffic in the preceding eight years. Uh, and the uh, website has uh, garnered some national and state marketing awards as well. Every few years, we, we update the uh, audio and video portion of our um, campaign. Uh, this year, we, s we uh, filmed a, a, a spot called A Little Bit of Magic. And uh, in the um, leading up to the creative process, we did focus groups up and down the state with our target audiences just to find out what sort of uh, treatments, musical treatments and uh, visual treatments would be most effective in communicating this message. Uh, we landed on, uh, we sort of netted out on a, um, uh, a musical genre that is funk, kind of a throwback to the 1960s, kind of a Bruno Mars uh, vibe to it. Um, and uh, so, yeah. <laughs> 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 then the uh, <laughs> we filmed the uh, the uh, uh, we had the shoot at uh, Cerritos College in, in in Norwalk, and I would like to uh, uh, take this opportunity to publicly thank uh, Dr. Uh, Jose Fierro, the president at Cerritos. Uh, he and his staff were very accommodating to uh, uh, f uh, to us. We spent uh, three days there and, and occupied uh, quite a bit of real estate on campus. So. Uh, thanks to the folks down there at Cerritos. Uh, the director on this project is um, uh, Zach King. He is a uh, social media phenom. Uh, he specializes in short form um, videos that are displayed on Vine and other uh, social media platforms. He is a master at optical illusion. Uh, his work is uh, playful and it has humor um, and in the focus groups that we, we conducted, uh, the target audience really did think that um, uh, magic tricks and optical illusions was an effective way of communicating this message. So we decided to uh, go to uh, uh, Mr. King and, and see if he would, would uh, uh, direct this video. He's a couple of years out of college, um, and he is, uh, for example, his in Instagram account has 13 million followers. So we got a great product uh, with the video, and we were also able to tap into his extensive uh, social media uh, base. So we're going to show you just a, a few of his short form uh, uh, works. This is how I hitchhike. <laughs> Woo! Man, I love Easter candy. <laughs> this is Twitter in real life. This is extreme gift wrapping. This is how I edit my Instagrams. Hmm. 
There we go. No, 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 no! Printing your pets. I can assure you no small animals were injured in the making of those films. <laughs> so uh, we're going to show you a little bit of magic. So I was at home thinking, how can I get help paying for community college? And then I heard this song. Hey, just visit today. I can afford college.com. Go find a delay at I can afford college.com. Hey, so you want to learn new skills, but need a little help paying the bills. It can help you buy books and supplies without a whole lot of problems. Your goals you can't pursue will be help with rent and your fees too. So visit today to get your financial aid And make your dreams come true Ooh. Hey, just visit today I can afford college.com Hey, your financial aid I, I can afford college.com Hey, just visit today I can afford college.com Hey, your financial aid I, I can afford college.com yeah. Apply year-round for your financial aid at I can afford college.com Brought to you by the California Community Colleges I can afford college.com <laughs> So this video is mainly playing online. Uh, we do have a small uh, television buy, which uh, Paige is going to discuss. It's also, the audio portion is on uh, radio, both uh, online radio and terrestrial radio. Um, at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Paige. She can talk a little bit more about our digital strategy and, and some of the metrics that we use to track the success of the campaign. All right, thank you. I'm not sure if you caught it, we did have a little cameo in that actual TV spot of Zach King, and that was intended, we did that intentionally so that we can help tap into that, uh, the 19 million followers that he has on the various social media networks. So as far as our new digital online ads are concerned, they also tie directly into the TV spot, uh, the video, the online video, and the radio. They're bilingual, they're available in English and Spanish, they're interactive. You can see we've used the same talent that we use in the TV spot to add some synergy. And with the interactive ads, we'll have like houses dropping down and students can click on them and it says we help pay the rent. It'll have books, it'll have money. Uh, we're running them on teen and young adult sites as well as influencer sites. Some of the re-entry sites we're using are Career Builder. Some <coughs> of the education sites that our online ads are running on are FastWeb, College Prowler, Miriam, Webster, any sites that uh, have very high um, views by both high school and college age students. And then we also are using entertainment websites because we know that's very important like iHeart, Pandora, and Hulu. So how is the campaign doing overall? We've created 15 second, 30 second, and 60 second video slash TV spots and radio spots and the online banners. Uh, as of when we put this ad, uh, this <coughs> presentation together, we had 460,000 views combined on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. I just did a quick check on it yesterday to see where we were at, and we're at roughly 500,000 views on it online. Uh, we also added this year a small TV buy because Zach King, who was our director and is featured in our video, was also, we couldn't have picked more perfect timing to tap into him and his talents. He was selected to be on The Amazing Race. Mm -hmm. So we do not have enough money to do large TV buys like we used to do with our ads, but we did feel that it was important to tap into his audience. So we had a small buy that ran for four weeks, the first four weeks of The Amazing Race, during The Amazing Race. And <clears throat> they, it ran from 2.12 to 3.14. And then we were also able to get some pro bono that I'll talk about in a second. But uh, just in case you're wondering, Zach King, we're now in, this week will be week six of The Amazing Race, and he's still in it. So <laughs> we're still getting some uh, good, good uh, hits from just his visibility on being on that TV show. So we've had more than 10,000 clicks to our website that we can directly connect to the buy. And if you, um, that's actually 
very good given that we've only been running this ad since the beginning of February. It has not been out very long. Um, 10,000 direct clicks from our paid media buy is very good. With regard to the click-through rate, we're getting a 0.73% video and digital click-through rate. Just to uh, compare that, the industry standard is 0.07, so the video is performing extremely well. With regard to our TV buy, we only were able to purchase 38 spots throughout the state of California during uh, the amazing race, and it performed extremely well. It delivered 5 million plus impressions, and we were able to secure an additional 666, <coughs> I'm sorry, 66,000 in bonus exposure. So what that means is for every $1 we spent on TV, we were able to garner $1.74 in exposure. So in addition to those 38 spots that ran during the amazing race, we were also able to get the spot placed in other shows like late night TV. <coughs> um, we have a paid social media marketing campaign. This was something that we started talking about in the fall of 2014. And I just wanted to give you an update. We have an Instagram, a Facebook, a YouTube, and a Twitter account. Since we started a very small um, social media paid campaign, our Facebook likes have grown by 244%. So as of when we put this presentation together, we were at 18,600 likes. Um, as of yesterday, we were at about 19,000 likes on Facebook. Our Twitter followers have grown by 152 um, percent. You could see that number is a little bit smaller. It was 4,600. 4, yesterday, we were at nearly 5,000. Twitter is not our main channel to reach this audience, but we do feel that it's important to be there to be able to hit the influencer audience. The campaign is really driven, and especially as Paul mentioned, with the um, the budget not increasing at all in the last 13 years, we really have to put an emphasis on outreach and doing one-on-one -on -one contact. So we have a robust statewide outreach campaign. We go to high school events, we attend college fairs, community college events, as well as community, community and faith-based events. Uh, some of our partnerships are listed up here. We've built relationships over the last 13 years with more than 200 community and faith-based organizations. This is just a sampling. Many of these, like Junior Achievement, Girls Inc., Alive and Free, and um, the Chicano uh, Latino Youth Leadership uh, Program, those are all youth-based community-based partners. We also have young adult and family partners like We Connect um, and, uh, and social justice partners like the Social Justice Learning Institute and the Asian Youth Center, which focuses on <coughs> Asian, and, uh, Asian youth and families as well as immigrants. We also have a media relations campaign. We create template articles for student newspapers, both community college and high school. We find these to be a very effective way to reach our students. Uh, some examples of recent press releases we've sent out to them are the 30th birthday for the Bo Board of Governors fee waiver. Uh, as well as the um, increases in the associate degree for transfer. We also provide template newsletter articles for our community and faith-based partners as well as school newsletters that go out to parents. And then we do outreach to reporters um, through media teleconferences and briefings. As Paul mentioned, we've had diminished ad buying power in the last um, 13 years. We wanted to just share a little bit of what's going on with you. We've remained at $2.8 million since the 0304 academic year. About two weeks ago, we did an analysis and we found that our advertising buying power has decreased by 46% since 2004. So it also tells you our media costs have nearly doubled over the last 13 years, which has really been challenging for the campaign. What that means is we've had to cut most of our Spanish language um, radio and we've cut our online advertising in Spanish language. However, we felt that that is a very effective way to reach this audience and very cost effective. So we have continued with um, media outlets like Popol, Inframedia, and Batanga uh, to reach that Spanish language audience, but that um, the catalog of who we used to buy through has significantly shrunk. We've also had to reduce the amount of collateral materials that we provide to colleges and community-based organizations. And we've had to reduce support for some of our community events. We used to have a uh, <coughs> much broader uh, 
uh, event lists that our campaign staffed and now we're relying more heavily on the colleges so we secure the events and then we work with the colleges and ask them to go out and staff the events for us. I, I would just add here that um, it, as the uh, purchasing power has diminished we have also uh, been called upon to do more with this campaign. Uh, for example last year when Corinthian colleges uh, closed abruptly uh, the I Can Afford College uh, outreach workers were integrated into a, a rapid response team that um, along with the uh, representatives <coughs> of the State Attorney General's Office, our colleagues at the Student Aid Commission and the Bureau of Private Post-Secondary Education, uh, we actually went to these exit meetings that the, these colleges had with these distressed students who saw their colleges close overnight and we were able to um, provide them with information about community colleges and uh, financial aid opportunities. So we're sort of first responders and it's a little bit ironic that um, if you do the math, we have, we're spending just over $1 per student uh, in our system on this campaign. And we're asked to go and um, help out when um, a for-profit that spends uh, up to 22% of its entire budget on marketing uh, fails. The campaign was also called upon when the economy took a dive a few years ago to be able to be a first responder and come out with ads talking about the availability of financial aid for people to go back to college to get retrained in a new career. We felt that that was really important and we've also uh, been called upon to create ads regarding uh, unemployment rates and how community colleges can help and the fact that financial aid is available to help support you. And three years ago we um, devoted resources to City College of San Francisco when they were in crisis when it came to an, an enrollment marketing. So one of the things that we've done to actually make the dollar go further is we've created some exciting partnerships. The uh, iHeart has been a great partner to the campaign since we launched 13 years ago. We've received a tremendous amount of support. Part of that is because one of the vice presidents at iHeart is a former community college graduate and he feels very, very strongly about this campaign and has always given us a tremendous amount of pro bono uh, media airtime and support whenever the campaign needs it. So we do a big campaign every year. Uh, this year we're <coughs> going to be launching our um, Watch and Win campaign in April 2016. Uh, basically students will go to our site, they'll watch our new Zach King video, uh, they'll be asked to answer three simple questions about financial aid and then uh, share the video on their social media channels and then they're entered into a drawing. And Clear Channel has provided all the prizes for the drawing this year. It's going to be a $5,000 scholarship. will be the first prize, a uh, MacBook Air and an iPad. And then we'll also have weekly drawings for concert tickets and uh, Jamba Juice and Starbucks. All are, will be provided by Clear Channel. Uh, in the past, we've done free ride to college. We've had 30-second video campaigns where students create their own videos on financial aid, post them on our website. We've had American Idol be a star, go to college, a TMZ paparazzi. These have all been highly successful and it's helped increase the visibility of the campaign. And it's directly related to our partnerships that we've developed over the last 13 years. <coughs> So overall, just a real quick, how is the campaign doing? The I Can Afford College, the most recent full year statistics or data that we have is for the 2014-15 fiscal year. The I Can Afford College campaign has received nearly 400,000 unique visitors, um, viewing approximately 840,000 pages in the 2014-15 year alone. We've delivered more than 179 million impressions through our radio, advertising, and added value. We've had nearly 157 million impressions delivered through our online advertising and added value estimates, which resulted in about 231,000 website visits. And our community college campuses, they can promote any event that they have related to financial aid on the I Can Afford College website. They have logins. They can go in and enter their own events on the site. And we've promoted 583,000, I'm sorry, 583 financial aid workshops on iCanAffordCollege.com. That's in addition to the roughly 50 events that the campaign staff goes out and staffs. And then we also feel that inReach is very important and we attend about 30 uh, community college based conferences a year to talk to faculty, staff, administrators, students about the campaign and get them connected. Well, thank you for the update. Let me see if there's any board members that have any questions about the campaign. Member Avalos? 
first of all, thank you very much. I mean, this has been impressive. I do remember uh, fall of 2014, I did ask you some challenging, tough questions. And if there was an award to show, you know, uh, government efficiency, if there was an award to say, you know, what you're doing, you know, doing more with the same, you would, in my opinion, you'd receive it. Thank you. you know, if, if there was something we could nominate of what you've done, it's tremendous, right? I mean, and every aspect of what I've seen in terms of <coughs> efficiency on mobile, on the mobile strategy or your media strategy has been so impressive. So I have nothing more to say but kudos to you and thank you for hearing what we've done, we, we asked you to do as a board and really taking it to the next level, right? Because ultimately, like I've said before, you know, what we're doing here is making an impact in students' lives and what this is doing is really reaching a community that otherwise wouldn't be reached. And so what you've done in the past 18 months has been tremendous. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Member Kahn and then Member Perry. I'm equally amazed by the work that you've been able to accomplish. This is a substantial, if not the most direct way to get students interested and understanding of their financial opportunities. Um, I just wanted to give sort of a recommendation <coughs> that you have over 113 community college associated students whose primary and core directive is to make sure that students are aware of things like financial aid resources as well as advocacy opportunities. So considering that you fall underneath both categories, find out how you can get connected with the local associated students and in fact the best way to do so is the president of the student senate who sits directly behind you. We actually are tied into the student senate. We attend conferences twice a year and give mm -hmm. presentations. We have uh, information tables out there and then we also work with the student member that work that attends CESPA, the California Community College's Student Financial Aid Administrators, and work with uh, that student to carry back information to their local student senate. Perfect. Thank you. Member Perry. I think this is great, and it's nice the humor, because most people don't think financial aid is something that um, you know <laughs> you can add an element of humor to. Uh, my question is, I really like what you're doing. If you had additional monies, where would you direct them to increase the outreach? We would uh, go back in to do more Spanish language, in language uh, work. Uh, we've had to abandon some markets. Um, we would just scale it up. I mean, if we had another 1.5 or even $2 million, we would be back at where we were uh, in 2003, 2004, four, uh, inflation adjusted, we could do more television. Would you do more online, given the, the beauty of the targeting of online buys? Which yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And yeah. even increase our social media buys right now, it's just a very small percent because we've lost so much of our budget that if we had increased dollars, we'd be able to do more there. And we find that that's a very cost-effective way to reach our students. The Chancellor had something you wanted to add, then Vice President Estolano. Yeah, I, I want the board to be aware of the fact that in addition to the degradation of the buying power of this program, we've made repeated uh, requests of finance, the legislature and the administration to similarly fund our transfer degree programs, our salary surfer, our scorecard, things that the public desperately needs to know about. These are fabulous programs that we simply don't have any resources to communicate. Now, there, the, it, it is a delicate balance of fund uh, using tax money to encourage uh, in this case students to apply for financial aid or to uh, uh, take advantage of the salary surfer or, or other issues and I and we know that's a that's a tough hill to climb however we have a responsibility to the public to make them aware that these transfer degrees that the salary surfer that uh, financial aid uh, is available to them so we continue to make that case with the legislature the administration and finance in the last couple of years we've been less successful than we had hoped but i can assure you that we're uh, uh, continuing to make that uh, pressure and we these programs really do need communication funding not a lot of money if we had you know, six or seven million dollars to uh, promote not only financial aid but the transfer degrees and the salary surfer program you'd see a remarkable change in the number of, of Californians who are aware of these programs by comparison how how much how robustly funded is the covered California um, program to <laughs> hundreds of millions hundreds of millions, so I just thought I'd be interested. Vice President Estolano. Yeah, I just uh, want to commend you on your selection of Zach King. Uh, so, you know, I always check on my social media with my 19-year-old uh, uh, stepson, and he said, absolutely, I know him. He does really good magic tricks on social media via really cool camera edit techniques. He's quite good. I told him he directed your video. He goes, nice, he's an upstanding guy. So, um, <laughs> um, so that's... 
it's terrific. And I think the social media buys really – what you're doing on social media is terrific. Um, I also want to say thank you for asking the question, Board Member Perry, because I think part of the onus is on us about if you had more resources, what would you do? And, and Chancellor Harris, you know, the idea of trying to package this all together. I mean, it's created by legislation. We can only change it by legislation, and that's really where we need to come in and help to make that case, particularly since what's been cut is uh, Spanish language media, which is where we need to really focus these days. So thank you for, for pointing that out to us. Well, thank you for a, a very good presentation. Uh, did you want to have one last point? One more thing. I just want to thank our friends at Runyon, Saltzman, Einhorn, Ogilvy, and Cerritos College, really. Uh, they've done a tremendous job working on this campaign with us and working on the video. So just wanted to add that. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're going to continue with the agenda. We're going to go through without taking a break. So if uh, any uh, members need to take a break, uh, Go ahead and do that, but we'll move on to item 3.2, the federal and state legislative update. Chancellor. Thank you. I'm uh, going to ask uh, Vice Chancellor Vince Stewart to come forward and give you a bit of an update on a couple of very interesting things that have happened in the last 30 days. Vince? Great. Thank you, Chancellor. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, President Baum. Vice President Vestalano, members of the board, um, Chancellor Harris, today I'm presenting informational item 3.2, which is the state and federal legislative update, and that's found on page 113 of your board binder. Um, I'd also like to note that an updated leg legislative matrix was distributed and should be at your dais with you. Um, I think I'd like to start my comics, comments this morning with our state legislative update. Uh, as I reported to you in January, uh, the deadline to introduce new legislation was February the 14th. Um, as usual with that deadline, we were met with hundreds of uh, new bills, uh, but because the legislature's rules do not allow bills to be heard or amended 30 days after they've been introduced, most of these bills will not be heard in the legislature until after their spring recess, which ends on March the 28th. So for that reason, I'll really focus on updating you regarding the Board of Governors sponsored legislation. Um, the first bill that I'd like to mention is Senate Bill 66. Uh, this is authored by Senator Connie Leva, and this is one of the bills that seeks to implement recommendations of the Workforce Task Force, uh, and specifically aligning state and federal accountability metrics and reporting requirements for our career technical education programs. Um, this bill would allow the Chancellor's Office to access employment and licensure data from the Department of Consumer Affairs. Uh, we're currently working with the department to make some adjustments to the language, but I do believe they're supportive and are willing to um, work with us and move forward with the legislation. Uh, this bill is also currently out of the Senate and in the Assembly f and awaiting its first policy committee hearing. Uh, the second bill that I'd like to mention is Senate Bill 906. This is by Senator Jim Bell. Uh, and this is the legislation that would make permanent the statutory priority enrollment for foster and former foster youth, as well as our students who are served by our extended opportunity programs and services and our disabled student programs and services. Uh, this bill passed out of the Senate Education Committee uh, on March 9th on a unanimous vote of 8 to 0, and it's now awaiting uh, hearing in the Senate Appropriations Committee. And this is uh, a statutory provision that had been in the Education Code previously, and we're simply seeking to extend that authority and actually remove the sunset date so we don't have to continually come back to the legislature requesting this extension. The, uh, the next two bills that I'd like to focus on deal with the Cal Grant program. Um, when I reported to you in January, the um, bills had not yet been introduced. Uh, we now have uh, two bills. One is Senate Bill 1721 by Assemblymember Jose Medina, the chair of the Assembly Higher Education Committee. This is legislation that would increase the Cal Grant B award. Uh, we're looking to increase that maximum award up to $3,000. Um, we would also like to increase the maximum age for our eligibility of that award from 28 to 31. Uh, and allow students up to three years to claim their Cal Grant B award. And then lastly, to increase the number of competitive awards up to $30,000. So these are generally the Cal Grant awards that go to students who start out in the community colleges and then transfer to a four-year institution. Uh, that bill has not yet been heard in committee, but we expect that that will take place after the legislative uh, summer break, or spring break, rather. 
the second bill, uh, also authored by Assemblymember Jose Medina, um, is S.A.B. 1892. And this is legislation dealing with the Cal Grant C program. And this is also one of the recommendations of the Workforce Task Force. And this legislation would increase the Cal Grant C award. And this is limited to public institutions because I know there is some concern about the Cal Grant C, which is really intended for students who are pursuing um, workforce uh, credentials and certificates, career technical education programs, that this really be focused on public institutions as opposed to creating yet uh, another incentive, if you will, for the private for-profits to try and tap into the resources uh, provided by the state for student financial aid. So this would increase that award up to $3,000, which is significantly more than what's currently available, which is about $500. And that award is used to help students pay their, um, their educational expenses beyond their fees, since for the most part, fees and tuition for these students are covered by the Board of Governors fee waiver. Um, I would also like to note that uh, in relation to the presentation you just had on the I Can Afford College campaign, that we're looking at both of these vehicles as uh, potential um, uh, avenues to have conversation about additional resources for the I Can Afford College campaign as a way to boost um, the outreach to students. There's a great need both in terms of what we're doing, but we also see the California Student Aid Commission is also looking for ways to make students more aware of the financial aid that's available through the Cal Grant program. So that will be uh, an ongoing conversation. Um, I think I'd like to, to now transfer our, or transition briefly to our federal update. I know that President Baum mentioned yesterday uh, some of the activities around the National Legislative Summit that occurred in early February. I would like to give you just a few brief additional points so you have some sense as to what we covered during that event uh, and then a, another event that occurred last week that I attended. So the National Legislative Summit, this is an annual event hosted by the Association for Community College Trustees. Um, we had President Baum, Vice President Estelano, Board Member Malumed, uh, Deputy Chancellor Skinner, and myself attend. Over the course of the summit, we met with 11 members of the California Congressional Delegation, including Senators Feinstein, uh, Senator Boxer. We also met with staff to Minority, minority Leader Pelosi, uh, as well as key members of the House uh, Education and Workforce Committee, the Veterans Affairs Committee, and the Armed Services Committee. So I think it was a very full uh, two and a half, three days. In addition, during that National Legislative Summit, I also had the opportunity with my Washington-based counterparts from the UC and the CSU to brief the California Public Post-Secondary Education Caucus of the California delegation. So these are California members in the House of Representatives that have been brought together primarily by uh, Representative Ami Berra and Jeff Denham to um, bring their colleagues together around issues and dialogue about supporting public higher education in California. So we had roughly 40 staffers and members attend and we were able to run through them, run through with them the priorities uh, of our system. Uh, I focused primarily on the student success scorecard and the annual report that we recently uh, issued. So I think they got a very good sense as to what is happening in the California Community Colleges, some of our challenges, and of course, many of our successes. Um, in terms of the advocacy issues for both the National Legislative Summit and the briefing, we focused really on three issues. We focused on um, increasing uh, Pell Grant and primarily restoring the restoration of the year-round Pell Grant, um, support for our veteran students, and then hopefully reauthorization of the Higher Education Act. Uh, I don't know that uh, folks are terribly optimistic that that will get done. Uh, this year, but we will continue to pursue uh, these issues and, and engage with our uh, legislators in Washington to let them know that these are still our priorities. Now, in addition to the summit, um, last week the White House uh, convened a meeting with leaders from California. This is something that they have been doing now for the past several weeks. They have held several state meetings with state leaders. I believe they've done New York. Um, they've done, uh, again, several others. Last week it was time for California. We had roughly 40 to 50 leaders of the California Community Colleges, many of our presidents, chancellors, 
Uh, we had representatives from the league, the league leadership, uh, several leaders from California cities coming together to talk about how uh, local community colleges and their communities are setting up college promise programs. We also had an opportunity to talk about what we're doing as a state and shared some of the data that has been put together by the um, Institute for College Access and Success, and I believe some of this information has been shared with you in terms of the level of support that our students receive both through the Board of Governors fee waiver. So as I'm sure you all are uh, aware, we have about 2.1 million students. Out of those 2.1 million students by headcount, nearly a million students already receive a Board of Governor fee waiver, so they are not paying fees. That is the most uh, generous and robust financial aid program in the country. When you couple that with the Cal Grant program, uh, that steps it up even, I think, a level higher, and I think it was clear from the conversation that we had with the White House representatives that California is uh, leaps and bounds ahead of other states, and I think this was an opportunity for us to really, quite honestly, take credit for some of the good work that we have been doing, and also look in, uh, to those areas where we can do more. And this sort of circles back to the priori priorities you have laid out in terms of sponsored legislation and looking at those non-fee, uh, non-tuition costs that students need to cover, books, transportation, housing, those sorts of things, because that's really where the gap lies for students. And that, uh, quite honestly, even with the other state programs around College Promise, they're not necessarily addressing those issues. So I think that will be an ongoing conversation that we have with our federal leaders. I will say um, that I thought the uh, representatives of the White House were very impressed with what we're doing. They were impressed with the representation around the state. We had Los Angeles. Long Beach, uh, Oakland, uh, I shouldn't probably try to name them because I won't name them all, but it was a very good representation of the state, both in terms of geography uh, and types of communities that are engaged in, in these activities. So that really rounds out my formal presentation in terms of what we've been doing at a state level and a federal level around legislation. I'm certainly happy to answer any questions that you might have either about legislative uh, bills at the state level or at the federal level. Thank you very much, uh, Vice Chancellor Stewart. We'll go to board member questions. Member Epstein. Uh, yeah, I, um, I think one of the more surprising things that I learned in, uh, in one of Bryce's mailings was uh, that the Cal grants are, uh, are given to for-profit colleges in an amount that could be five or six times what a community college student receives. And uh, I, I really appreciate that, that the, uh, the bill that we're sponsoring would limit uh, the Cal Grant increases to uh, public school students. And I think that's a principle we ought to take into all, any discussion of Cal Grants ever, is that uh, to point out the disparity and the, you know, and, and the different kinds of education and motivation you receive from a community college compared to a for-profit college. I think that should be a, you know, a core part of our message wherever we go. Thank you, Chancellor. Me. Any other questions on uh, uh, state or federal legislation? Uh, Member Khan. Going through the legislative matrix, I was actually curious about AB 2352 regarding a potential 16th pilot college for the baccalaureate degree program. Does that bill hold weight? <laughs> um, if, if this is the bill, I'll look at my list. I think this is the bill to add uh, Crafton Hills College uh, to the baccalaureate pilot program. Um, I've spoken with the sponsor of that legislation, and my understanding is that they are going to drop that bill, so they will not be moving it forward. If I recall, they were at the in the original list, and then they had uh, some internal issues and then dropped out. Correct. Correct. Any other questions about state and federal legislation? Well, thank you very much, and thank you for your uh, leadership and coordination of the uh, legislative summit activities, too. Great. Thank you. Great. Right, we're moving on to item 3.8, board member reports. We'll start with our newest member, Member Haynes. <laughs> thank you. Um, first, let me say that um, I truly enjoyed my two days here and having a chance to meet um, all of my colleagues, and I'm looking forward to the work we're going to do in the future. Um, 
I have just one activity that I'd like to share, and, and that was that I attended the League's Equity Summit. Um, it was my second opportunity to do so. And while the format was different, um, the information was absolutely fabulous. And um, one of the presentations that I was truly interested in um, was um, two gentlemen that offer trainings around um, how to um, uh, work with uh, men of color. And um, what was important for me was that this wasn't just a um, above the surface kind of conf um, workshop. It really moved toward how one op uh, operationalizes equity. Um, sort of a step-by-step -step for faculty and anyone else who's really interested in doing so, um, which had me really think about how one does that as a trustee, which really means as we look at our, for me anyway, as we begin to look at our, our strategic plans, that equity really has to not just be a value on a piece of paper, that equity really has to be interwoven with all of our actions, with all of our goals, with all of our um, our operations. And so it, it really got me thinking. And so I really appreciate the work that the League did relative to bringing these two folks to the conference and really beginning to have that dialogue because we are, we're only going to have that equity money it's not a forever piece of money, and so to the extent, and it shouldn't be treated, we really need to um, institutionalize our values. The only way we can do that is to operationalize them in the nooks and crannies of the work that gets done on our campuses. Thank you. Thank you, Member Burdick. Thank you. Um, in fact, I took the Men of Color workshop uh, back in December. It was wonderful. It was a five-day online workshop. I highly recommend it. Um, two things I'd like to report on. First, I went to the Accreditation Institute put on by the Academic Senate down in San Diego. It was excellent. It, it focused entirely on the future um, and how schools can work toward accreditation better, um, shared a lot of, of experiences, so that was, that was excellent. I also, just this last weekend, was at the um, Academic Senate's Equity Conference, which was held here in, in Sacramento, uh, where we were looking at how equity can be built into the entire structure so that it was not somehow a separate um, task that we were doing, but that it was integrated into everything from our planning to our program reviews and everything else. Excellent program. Thank you, Member Perry. When I wasn't working on the 26 questions <laughs> as part of the confirmation <laughs> process in the five minutes that I had, um, I began the process of sort of getting to know my district first better and met with um, Robert Schwartz and Sydney Kamlager, two leaders in that uh, in, the, in the Los Angeles area, and I want to continue uh, to do those meetings. So they, they were both great and informative, and we're exploring ways to work together. Great. Thank you, Member Shaw. To um, echo board member Perry after my 26 questions and the fact that I've been uh, here three times in Sacramento in the last 28 days for confirmation and also the search committee um, that's really that's where I spent my time but you know um, having come from local government served for three being appointed by three mayors so I've been confirmed like five times <laughs> this confirmation was quite a challenge and you know, as you, when you look back on your career, different people help you through different times in your life. And I have to say that I would not have been made, I would not have made it through confirmation without Vince Stewart. Mm -hmm. He held my hand, he gave me confidence. Uh, he couldn't answer questions in the meetings because they wouldn't let him. <laughs> <laughs> they said, he can't talk, oh, okay. But he, he is just, he's an extraordinary person we're and we're really lucky to have him. Thank you. Thank you. Member Sumner? I actually was very honored. I got invited to go to the Veterans Summit, um, which was a two-day event, and I was just so impressed. There was over 300 um, professionals that were there, and every college should send at least one representative from their colleges to the Veterans Summit. And every school should have at least a VRC after listening to these. I was just so impressed with 
what these people go through to do to get the veterans to get their benefits to get into school to everything i just was blown away with just their passion that they have for that and i'm looking forward to next year and i just love to put a word out that every college should definitely be there i was also invited to go to the um, educator center influence at fort sam houston which is going to be the end of this month and i'm really honored to be going there because it's really about the medical but it's a lot more than that is how we as california are one of the leads and i'm hoping to come back and learn some more information from them so i will report out more next month but just proud to serve here not only representing the veterans but also other students that feel that they can come forward and feel that they have a voice so i just think that we really have that opportunity and you know we are your voice and please come to us as i mentioned i'm so glad you're able to do that and represent our system before uh, in this um, exercise with the military uh, member hawkins thank you uh, the as everyone knows the class community college classified employee of the year award program will be handled in May. We have received our applications and the committee is uh, going to begin the review shortly. Everyone have a safe trip home. Member Belinsky. I had the opportunity to attend one day at the CCLC Legislative Conference on January 31st. One of the opening sessions which really caught my attention was improving the mental health of California Community College students. And I even then became aware that there's an effort, and maybe I've heard this before and just have forgotten, but that there's an effort around this through our foundation uh, called Raising Awareness of the Community College Mental Health Needs. Uh, really important and many community colleges are moving uh, to having somebody on site to address day-to-day -day kinds of needs of students in the mental health area. Also, as has been said before, Bell, Bell Whelan, Dr. Bell Whelan uh, was there who is the president of the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools Commissions. She did at least two presentations which were very informative and very helpful um, to have attended. I also went to a February 4th California Higher Education Challenge event, uh, and the Chancellor did put something in our uh, weekly update, but I do did see again the fact of bringing the leaders of the three public segments of higher education together and engaging the community is just really, really, really valuable. I did not get to attend the American Council on Education uh, talk that Chancellor Harris provided, but I thought I would mention it uh, because as we know, he got a Lifetime Achievement Award that evening and I would like that in the minutes of, the, of, the, of getting this Lifetime Achievement Award. And I would like to just close by again saying uh, to, uh, congratulations to Dr. Linda McAllister for winning an award today. Uh, the traffic clearly was an issue. As she said, it took her two and a half hours to get from Berkeley to Sacramento. So, but just to congratulate her again. Thank you. Member Kahn? Um, so first off, I've been visiting um, a lot with a lot of students. I actually had to take the bar approximately three hours in one day between classes to provide a presentation on the Board of Governors. Hmm. Um, essentially, the goal of my outreach with a lot of these students is to give a presentation both Member Campbell and I have created together to introduce students to the concept of the Board of Governors, what we do on a monthly basis, um, and a lot of the major activities that are happening at the state level, which a lot of our students are simply unaware of. So spreading that transparency and visibility of our work is huge. Um, other than that, we met with uh, students representative of Foothill and De Anza's district. Um, unfortunately, was not able to meet with the Peralta district student leaders, but I've done what I can to meet with them individually. Um, we're going to continue developing these presentations for each of these meetings that we hold as an easy way for students to just get an idea of what happens as well as create a record for our students to easily access what has previously been done by past Board of Governors members, as well as this entire board. Um, the last thing I wanted to add was that I'm going to be hopefully attending office hours for Linda just to personally congratulate her. And um, oh, also we, I guess, I mean, you can touch upon the things that we've gone to as far as events, but um, Andrew's with us for a few more months. So we've already started the search for his replacement. Although I want to say now it's going to be really difficult because you said a high bar, buddy. 
Thank you. Uh, Member Campbell. All right. Thank you. Um, so since the last Board of Governors meeting, uh, definitely been up to a lot of things. Hassan has done more than I have done. Um, so uh, since the last Board of Governors meeting, I had the opportunity to tour the new Chancellor's Office facilities. I've been here a lot, but not since the new update. I definitely like um, all the new updates and everything that's moving all the Chancellor's Office to one floor, and it's great improvements. Additionally, I met with the Governor's Office as well as the Faculty Association. Went to the, um, actually Hassan and I, along with other student leaders, attended the um, FAC Advocacy and Policy Conference, which was the first time I've ever been to that conference. Been to almost every conference within the system, but not that one. Um, the Student Senate Council meeting we attended and gave our, our regular update to the Student Senate Council. Additionally, I was actually happy to see that the California State Student Association, the CSU version of the Student Senate attended that meeting and it was great to see the collaboration between the two student organizations. Um, moving forward, we're both looking forward to the um, Student Senate's General Assembly where all the colleges across the state will be in one place to facilitate um, discussions on policy issues for the upcoming year. And that's it. Thank you, and as she's known in the capital, Lakani. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, like my colleagues uh, uh, across the way, um, I will be haunted for the rest of my life by the, <laughs> by the 26 question drill. Um, they were much more, much more fastidious than I. Uh, I'm always late with everything, and I don't do math and I don't type. So, uh, so uh, thank goodness for uh, Vince's help. It was great. And maybe this will, uh, on the 23rd, I had my little uh, meeting with the staff. And maybe next week, uh, Jennifer and I will survive the last of our 26 question uh, dilemma. Uh, I think next Wednesday, unless they cancel on us again, <laughs> we will go before Senate rules. Um, on February 18th, though, I, I had an opportunity to um, attend, and they actually let me speak, which was very dangerous on their part, but uh, Bakersfield Community College held a, a pathway seminar. And there were um, 10 community colleges represented there four or five hundred folks, um, staff, um, faculty, uh, I'm not sure if there are many students there. Um, I made every student I talked to aware, hey, there's something going on over here, you guys ought to show up with me, but um, it was quite interesting, especially the different perspective from, you know, it's the same program that we offer, all the opportunity is there, but each college has their own take on it and how it's working and what it's doing, so um, it was really great. Uh, not too far from my home, just about an hour away. So um, uh, I enjoyed that opportunity and hopefully uh, has got me uh, ready for an opportunity to do a little bit more of that, a little uh, uh, traveling around and visiting the other campuses and attending uh, whatever they have to offer that I think could be of use to being in service on this board. Thanks. Thank you very much. Member Epstein. So the only thing I have to report is the uh, service on the uh, search committee, which mm -hmm. required a lot of reading and talking and questioning, and uh, it's been very interesting, and I've enjoyed it and look forward to a successful conclusion. <coughs> Thank you. Member Avalos? Thank you. So I, I made a trip to Ventura College um, last month, and I sat through two meetings, which first time ever, which was uh, consultational council. If, if you all haven't experienced it, you should experience it. It's unique. Uh, and second, District Council of Accreditation and Planning meeting. So I had that opportunity to do that. That was pretty exciting to be, to, to be part of those uh, conversations and understand what was there. The other thing, uh, when I was at Ventura College, one of the things I found that was unique was I brought up the question last time around books. And they're actually helping to solve that question. They actually have a book library of where you actually borrow books. And they had probably over a thousand books there. Um, and I wonder, you know, Ventura's doing it. Who else is doing it? Or who else is not doing it? And the question is, why not? And so, you know, so I leave that with, with the board again around, you know, what else can we do uh, at the ground level to help this problem around books? Thank you. Member Reed? Yes, uh, I have the opportunity of serving on the investment committee for uh, the foundation, and we had a meeting with J.P. Morgan regarding uh, the Osher funds as well as the Blue Cross funds that we manage. Presently, we have about $80 million in that fund, and to date we've given over $20 million worth of scholarships out through the Osher um, grant. So um, things are doing well, and uh, it's really a, a 
pleasure for me to serve on that committee. Vice President Estolano. Um, two things. I attended the National Legislative Summit um, that, that Vice Chancellor Stewart mentioned. I uh, just want to thank him very much for putting together terrific meetings and keeping us um, on target and getting us around. Um, Lizette and Ryan from the League and Larry Galicia from the New York, I think it was a really successful trip. So thank you for all of your support. Uh, also, I've been chairing the Chancellor Search Screening Committee that's taken quite a bit of time, but I want to commend my colleagues who serve on that with me and those who are not on the Board of Governors, David Morris, and, and looking right at you. Um, it's been a great process. Thank you for your professionalism and for your commitment to it. Folks have really been putting in a lot of time and have been giving careful deliberations. So I look forward to bringing that to a conclusion, um, we hope, by the next board meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you to the board members. Uh, it's, it, it's great that we have a full complement of board members to share in, uh, and explain the role of the board to uh, various stakeholders throughout the state. So I appreciate everybody's reports. We'll move now on to a public forum. Uh, do we have any members of the public that wish to address the board? I have three speaker cards. I have David Morris, Lori Jones, and Victor Chavarin. Oh, look, I have more coming. Okay. <laughs> Uh, President Baum, Chancellor Harris, and board members, just a couple of things. First of all, yesterday before the meeting, I put at all of your seats the most recent uh, copy, uh, the most recent edition of our publication, the Senate Rostrum. So yeah, I think there are a number of articles there that will be of interest to you, and so I hope that we'll perhaps supply some reading material for you on your trip home, um, unless you're driving. <laughs> um, in which case, wait. Uh, and, the, uh, and would just say for the public that the rostrum is available online through our website, ASCCC.org. I do want to thank uh, members uh, uh, Belinsky and Burdick for attending our Accreditation Institute, um, and also member Burdick for the Academic Academy, both of which uh, were very successful, and we're always happy to have board members join us at our events. And in that spirit, want to just call to your attention our Academic Senate Plenary Session from April 21st to 23rd here in Sacramento. Uh, that is, as I have, I believe, mentioned to you before, going to be a joint event with the Chief Instructional Officers, Chief Student Services Officers, and the CCCAOE. So we are expecting as many as 1,500 people there. Uh, faculty leaders, administrative leaders from all over the state, and I think that you would be very interested in the discussions and the presentations that we are having. want to thank President Baum, who has agreed to be our keynote speaker for that event, and we will also have a number of other people who have, uh, you know, in, including the vice chancellors, uh, many of whom will be joining us, but we have also had uh, tentative commitments at the very least, um, or interest expressed from certain members of the legislature, from the Department of Finance, from the governor's office, and others who would like to come by and join us, um, at least for parts of that event as well. So I think that you would find it very interesting. And specifically want to also invite you to, on the Thursday evening of that event, uh, our um, Academic Senate Foundation will be having a fundraising uh, event reception. And we would very much like to have any of you who are interested join us, especially for that event. So. Thank you. Thank you. Here. Um, I think we have Lori Jones, Victor Chavadin, and then I missed a card, Tammy Dunning. Hi, my name is Lori Jones. I'm Director of Legislative Affairs of the Student Senate at American River College. So good morning, uh, good President morning. Mom, members, and especially Pamela Haynes, our trustee from Los Rios. Um, I'm here to ha ask some questions and have uh, comments and hopefully get some information later on this um, brochure about the fog fee waiver changes. Mm -hmm. um, we got some misinformation. I was making classroom um, announcements uh, that the BOG would no longer pay for the classes that were not in your uh, ed plan. And um, I had written our advisor and said, this is major. We need some workshops on this. You know, we don't quite understand what it is. I ran into the uh, campus reporter who was at our meetings, and he said he had spoken to the advisor who said he'd misspoken, but he said he was given this uh, brochure, and he couldn't figure out what the changes were. And then I got one, and I couldn't figure out either. It says changes, but it doesn't exactly say changes in the uh, body of the text. And uh, what I was looking for is, you know, here's how it works now, here's what the changes would be. It does mention the two-point grade point and the cumulative 50% coursework. Um, 
I tried to call our financial aid office and it says call the registrar, we don't have one, we have enrollment services. I was getting bounced back and forth between them and then I saw the logo, so I thought, well, there was no email or phone number on here for you, but there was tweet and other things I don't do. <laughs> but I Googled it and, and got a phone number and talked to someone who said they weren't actually changes, they were um, changes of implementation. Um, and then I went to my counselor to get a new ed plan and he said that uh, th th in the fall there would be a change that they wouldn't cover anything over 90 units. And I said, well, I don't see that in here. So oh, I'm trying to clarify that. So I would appreciate um, if this could be clarified and maybe rewritten in a way that's more clear and also uh, find out about the 90 units. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We have Victor Chavarin followed by, uh, sorry, 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 Tammy Dunning, and then lastly, Dahlia Sal Salem. President Baum, may I go last? It's uh, um, presentation. Okay, Dahlia has to go last. You guys can thumb wrestle about it. Um, I can go before her. Tammy Dunning. Okay. Thank you. My name is Tammy Dunning. I am the communications officer for the SSCCC the Region 2 Governance and Policy Center, Senator, and the Communications Officer for American River College. Region 2 is presenting this document, the Student Senate Council Transparency and Accountability Report compiled by the Region 2 Council that raises serious concerns regarding the SSCCC. These concerns include Brown Act violations, refusal of Pu California Public Records Act requests, and a severe lack of transparency. I have now spoken to Vice Chancellor Walker, Bog Member Sundner, and Chancellor Jackson, and we have agreed to work on these issues. Region 2 asks that the Bog does not recognize the SSCCC to receive any SRF funding for at least three months to ensure that these issues are resolved. And while no one is asking that the SSCCC be dissolved or replaced, we are instead firmly believing that with proper reforms, we can move forward representing the 2.3 million community college students. I look forward to working with the Chancellor's Office on resolving these issues, and I hope to report back in May that they have been resolved. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so I have Victor and Dahlia. I'm not sure how you guys want to do this. I'm going. Okay. <laughs> um, so if I can call um, our executive committee, and that would be President Dahlia Salem, Treasurer Katie Miller, Secretary Naima Kaleem, and Communications Officer Tammy Dunning to come up here, please. Just come. Okay. Um, oh, we're not going to stick in front of this. Um, so we have a presentation for Chancellor Harris. Oh. <laughs> We just like to take you guys' time. <laughs> so, the plaque reads, in appreciation of your dedicated service and outstanding accomplishments for the students of the California Community College System, presented to Dr. Bryce W. Harris, Chancellor, I can't say the word, I'm, thank you. Um, see, we kind of got ready for you guys giving him the title. Um, and then it's quoted, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world, Nelson Mandel.
It's been a pleasure working for you guys. <laughs> Anybody who's seen a, uh, a speech by a Chancellor Harris knows that uh, one of his signature touches is to intersperse the speech which actual pictures the faces of the students of our system and that is always a, a very visible indicator of where he places his uh, top priority. So I appreciate the students uh, doing that uh, for him. All right, and then we have Dahlia Salen as our last speaker. All right, thank you so much members of the board. Uh, again, my name is Dahlia Salem. I'm the president of the Student Senate for California Community Colleges. Uh, I apologize I was not here yesterday. I was taking a final. Uh, today I also have a final to run to. That's my punishment for being on the quarter system. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to just give a brief update um, on what we've been doing as usual. So uh, we've collaborated with the Academic Senate um, on mobilizing over 20 colleges to adopt OER resolutions. Uh, so we have successfully through direct student mobilization as well as uh, in collaboration with the local Academic Senates uh, mobilized about 20 colleges to adopt um, OER resolutions, which basically uh, make it a lot easier for our, our students to purchase um, low uh, or free textbooks. Um, next thing that um, is kind of uh, in the horizon is um, we are looking uh, for a restructuring of the organization, so to better enable us to serve the 2.3 million students that we have in the system so that we can ground ourselves in grassroots organizing and local accountability. Um, so that will take place in a form of a constitution uh, revision in our General Assembly coming up April 29th through May 1st. Everyone here is invited. We're still looking for keynotes and breakout sessions. So if you're interested, please let me know. Um, our next upcoming event is as well as uh, is our advocacy event. It's called Advocacy in April. It's going to be April 21st. We're going to be having some training for our students so that they can go back to their campuses with sort of lifelong learning in terms of uh, what they gained from um, uh, you know, well aware on the legislative process as well as the budget process and whatnot and how to advocate to their local legislators. Um, so that should be April 21st. Um, last thing is we've introduced a couple of bills in the, this legislative session, two bills, uh, AB 2766 and AB 1995. One aims to expand student representation on the California Student Aid Commission, um, which is the board responsible for, for financial aid ma matters within the state. And the second bill uh, aims to uh, provide um, our homeless student population access to shower facilities on their campuses. Um, so your support in those two bills would also be greatly, greatly appreciated. Uh, there are other bills that we're also kind of advocating for, uh, anywhere from Cal Grant, DR, Dream Resource Centers, voter registration, mental health, and I believe Vince touched up a little bit on all of those. Um, lastly, I just want to kind of uh, say I'm sorry to um, expose you to our drama at 10.53 a.m. in the morning on a Tuesday morning. Uh, but um, um, what, I, what I have to say about it is that this is kind of the first time I've seen the packet and um, we will be addressing it vigorously, working with the Chancellor's Office um, as well as all the help that we can get to kind of address all these concerns and complaints. Um, we also have to kind of have a serious conversation about how we can keep our students dedicated in terms of showing up to their shared governance and advocating because we have an extremely high turnover rate. Um, and I want to say that is largely contributed to the fact that students, when they sit on this board and they do this work, they have to choose between putting fo food at the table at home and advocating for other students. So I thank you for your attention um, and I'll be seeing you in May. For new business. The last uh, two items, one on new business, uh, there was a terrific op-ed in the Sacramento Bee over the weekend on equity, and I look forward to having a, um, an update to the board on uh, w what we're doing on equity and some uh, uh, opportunities for improvement in that uh, area, too. Also, um, I do want to say before we uh, adjourn, a, another uh, deep thanks on behalf of the Board of Governors to Dan Troy for his exceptional service to the system. We're going to miss you here, and we know uh, your new district is very lucky to have you, and we hope that uh, we'll see you wearing a different hat uh, that, and glad you're still involved with the system. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for uh, providing great service to uh, the state and to uh, the system. And then uh, with that, we will now adjourn in honor of our Chancellor Emeritus and, uh, and look forward to uh, reconvening with our acting chancellor, and we're, we're fortunate on all accounts. Thank you, and, uh, and in honor of our Chancellor Emeritus, Bryce Harris.